Hey! What is up, guys? My name is MG Marcelino. And today I'm gonna be teaching you guys about the standard atomic notation. Now, what is the standard atomic notation? Well, it is a symbol uh, that will tell you what the element is, what the mass number is, and what the atomic number is. And with the atomic and mass number, we can find the amount of protons as well as the number of neutrons. Now, let's take a uh, uh, element such as a uh, fluorine. It could be any element, but we're going to take fluorine. Now, the atomic notation for fluorine, first we're going to have the element symbol for fluorine, which is F, as you can see from the diagram. And then, on the top left of the notation, we got the mass number. In this case, for fluorine, the mass number is 19. Now, we'll move on to atomic number, which is on the bottom of the atomic notation. In this case, it will be 9. Now, 9 is also the amount of protons that this, this element has. Okay? Now, how do we find the amount of neutrons? Of this element. Well, ladies and gentlemen, to, honor, to be honest with you, it's not hard. Uh, to find the uh, number of uh, neutrons of fluorine, we take the mass number of fluorine, which is uh, 19, as I explained earlier, and also we take the atomic number, which is 9, and then we subtract it. So, what is 19 minus 9? Well, if you guys don't know what 19 minus 9 is, it's 10. 10 is the amount of neutrons in fluorine. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the standard topic. Alright, what's up y'all? My name is MJ Marcelino and today I'm going to be teaching you guys the arts of the metric system. Now, here in the US, we use a thing called the imperial system which if we were to measure something in length then we would use feet and inches but the metric system you see is much more efficient because you can measure length in centimeters decimeters kilometers normal meters and so on now I'm gonna give you an example we're gonna measure one decimeter into kilometers now, as uh, the diagram I'm showing you right now, you can see that you can move the decimal since kilometers is four decimals away from decimeter. So, one decimeter would equal 0 0.001 kilometers. Now, what if you want to convert decimeters into a meter? Well, honestly, that is pretty simple because you can
can move the decimal once because a decimal is about 10 no it's about 100 times smaller yeah than a meter so one so no zero no one decimeter would equal 0 0.1 meter and that my friend is about the metric system well if you want to measure instead of length but you want to instead measure fluids then you would use liters instead of meters so we would call centimeters centiliters if we were measuring something like water for example now if we were going to measure let's say weight then we would use grams so it would be called centigram, cent, uh, uh, centigram, decigram, kil kilogram, so forth. And yeah, that's um, it's pretty much the metric system. Honestly, I don't know why we can't establish the metric system in the U.S. Because honestly, I just think it's really better. But actually, you know what? I'm already used to uh, the imperial system, to be honest. And you know, uh, that, that, that's it. Uh, good night, guys. Hello Elizabeth, today uh, I'm going to be doing my uh, chem project on uh, atomic notation and uh, you can pretty much get all of this by reading off the periodic table. So uh, the first thing is the giant letters uh, that appear on there. That is the uh, chemical symbol for the element. Uh, those symbols appear for specific elements because the person who discovered the element uh, decided to name it that way, I don't know. Uh, uh, next up is the uh, top left number, which is the mass number, which you can get uh, by combining the number of protons and neutrons. And you get the top left number, which is the mass number. Uh, so you're probably wondering how you find the number of protons. Well, you read the bottom left, of course, because uh, that's how the scientists decided to do it. Now, if you find a wacky number right below the giant chemical symbol, uh, that, like, you know, it's got, like, decimals and stuff. That's the, uh, atomic average atomic mass number, which is the average weight of all the common isotopes of the, of the element. Okay, so today I'll be providing an example, and, hold on, I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta bring it up. Sorry, my bad. Okay. So today we're gonna do thorium, okay? So, the symbol for thulium is the uh, TM right in the middle. And the number on top, 69, that is the atomic number, right? That number also appears on the bottom left, which is the number of protons in the element. Now, below the TM is 168.934. That's the atomic mass unit number. So that's the average rate of all the isotopes. And on the top left, is the number 169. So if we know the number of protons is 69, then that means that uh, you gotta do math. You gotta do uh, what Mr. Duca taught you. So you gotta do 169 minus 69 to find the number of neutrons. And you get 100 neutrons. And yeah, that's, that's essentially it. I don't, I don't know what else to say. I guess TM appears because the the person uh, who discovered the element decided to name it Thulium. And maybe their name is Mr. Thulium. You never know. Was that the bite of 87? Hey guys. I'm talking about that's used to show how many protons and neutrons are in the Oh, like that's what the mass number is. It's holding them together protons and neutrons. And the atomic
Guys, today I will be talking about the metric system. I like the metric system more than the imperial system because it moves in increments of head, which makes it easier to read. Uh, you use it to measure volume, mass, and distance using gears, meters, and amps as base units. To add on to the base units, you do deco. You guys, tech, 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 that's kind of crazy how easy it is to use. Ah, don't you just wish that that was our measuring system? Here in the United States of America, 